What's up, everyone? Welcome to This Day in Philly Sports History for February 9th, 2023. We're officially under four days till kickoff. Uh, it's been a long week. Um, it's it's going to be a long two more days of work. Weekend shouldn't be too bad. Saturday, I got some things in line to, to help pass the time. I'm excited for our first daddy-daughter dance on Saturday night. So that, that'll be a lot of fun. But Sunday is going to be... Just excruciating. I'm going to be bouncing off the walls. I've already apologized to my wife um, for, I don't even know what I'm going to do yet, but for doing it because I know it's going to happen. But as Tom Petty said, the waiting is the hardest part. Team looked locked in in some of the interviews yesterday. They're saying the right things. They're focused. Uh, it's Like I said, this is what you want. The team is about as healthy as you can be this late in the season heading into the Super Bowl. So let's go. Uh, Quick housekeeping, dropped Back to the Future day early this week. It is our Super Bowl preview, so it is up. The YouTube link is posted as well, so go check that out wherever you get your content. It's Back to the Future with a PH. While you're there, be sure to give a like and subscribe and check out some of our past episodes. But this to, for today's Philly Sports Black History Spotlight, we're going to look at Octavius Cotto. He was born in South Carolina in 1839, but as a young kid, moved to Philly. Uh, he studied Latin, Greek, English, and math at the Institute for Colored Youth, which became uh, eventually down the line became Cheney University. And he was a good cricket and baseball player. Now. Remember, he was born and moved to Philly before baseball was invented. Um, this was pre, uh, like he, all this happened pre Civil War, and I'm pretty sure baseball was invented post Civil War. So cricket was big in England. So a lot of people in the United States still uh, played cricket instead of baseball. So he was good with that. But once baseball became big, he was a huge proponent and a huge player in getting Philly to become a, a national hub for Negro League baseball. Uh, he found it and played shortstop for the Pythion Baseball Club. And that was one of the first all-black teams in Philly. Uh, later on this month, we're going to talk about some of the other teams that, that came up in Philly. But they weren't going to be there if it wasn't for Octavius Cotto. Uh, unfortunately, they had to play a lot of their games across the river in Camden because they had trouble getting permits to play in Philly due to the uh, the post-Civil War uh, racial Laws. I, I guess it wouldn't technically be Jim Crow in Philly, but uh, they had trouble. So, uh, at, as well as being one of the the marquee people for bringing the Negro Leagues to Philly, he devoted his life to education. Uh, he actually became a teacher and a principal at the Institute for Colored Youth after he graduated. Um, and while we're talking this a little bit of sports. Um, like some of the other guys we're going to talk about this month, he was more known for fighting for post-Civil War equal rights for black people, um, specifically when it came to voting and equal educational opportunities, um, especially in Philadelphia. And he was very, very outspoken, very big in the community. Uh, definitely, I don't want to say he ruffled feathers, but like at the time, that's what you had to do as a black man to get things the way they needed to be and there, obviously there's still a long way to go today but he was one of those first pioneers especially in Philadelphia unfortunately he was murdered um, on 9th at 9th and South Street on his way to vote in the 1871 election due to some of those um, just the the conflicts that happened between whites and blacks at the time um, so while he was murdered and did not necessarily can be wasn't able to continue his fight. Uh, people picked up in, in on his behalf, and the city uh, in 2017 actually recognized his uh, contributions to the city as well as just um, the the black community in the city. And there is a statue of him outside of City Hall that was dedicated in the fall of 2017. So today we spotlight Octavius Cotto. The sports aspect was he was one of the uh, big players and main people responsible for bringing Negro League Baseball into Philly. But more importantly, he was just one of the first pioneers to fight for civil rights, specifically when it came to voting and education for black people in the city of Philadelphia. So shout out to you, Octavius Cotto. Uh, quick Sixers update. Tough one last night. They lost to the Celtics 106-109. Uh, they just were flat. I mean, the Celtics were shorthanded. The Sixers should have won that game. And they just they just looked like they were 
I don't know. Maybe they're getting ready for the All Star break. Maybe some of the distractions from uh, the the trade deadline. I, I don't know, but it's and it's a shame because it was a good measuring stick. They could have gained ground on them as the Celtics were shorthanded, but. Uh, at least you can take one team now out of the mix with KD going to Phoenix. And, man, Phoenix is going to be, once they get everybody healthy, they're going to be pretty good and tough to beat. But it should be a fun playoff run. Al's lost a tough one. I said yesterday SMU is a tough place to play. They lost 72-71 in a game that was just back and forth the whole time. Unfortunately for the Owls, because of the SMU's record, that probably sticks a fork in any uh, – NCAA tournament hopes that they may have had unless they're able to get a miraculous run through the AAC tournament but just a tough one I mean you could have you could have afforded this loss had you not lost to that Wagner and uh, Maryland Eastern Shore game and and I keep going back to that all year but those two losses sting especially when you have wins against Rutgers and wins against Houston it's oh well uh Quick, another quick Eagles update. I want to hit to uh, go through Chris Sims, and this dude just keeps doubling down and doubling down on the Jalen Hurts hate. Um, he said yesterday, playing quarterback for the Eagles right now is set up to be one of the easiest jobs in the sport. Really, what what did Gardner Minshew do? Um, are you saying Gardner Minshew is terrible? Because you also were the same one that if Gardner Minshew is the quarterback that said that they were going to be good. Um, I just feel like this dude is just an ass clown. Like, what what qualifications does he have? Because his dad won a Super Bowl with the Giants. Um, and, like, the dude has 12 touchdowns, 18 interceptions uh, in his career. But he's qualified to talk about how easy it was. Could you play on this Eagles team and lead them, Chris? I, I think your stats kind of speak for themselves. Probably not. So just keep with the hate. Like, it, it is what it is. I don't like to buy into it. But you know what? bring it um also real quick before we get in i wanted to now that they're playing the chiefs and one thing that kept popping in my head check it out on youtube if anybody remembers and this is just me being goofy right now i guess but remember the snickers commercial where the guy was painting the uh the chiefs logo in the end zone and the guy says hey man that's great but who are the chefs oh great googly moogly just kind of funny and that's been in my head all week since there's nothing else going on um anyway Let's go back to 1999, and on February 9th, 1999, <clears throat> Penn took on Princeton at the Palestra in a game, or a, I guess a game that became known as Black Tuesday. Um, this was a great, obviously Penn versus Princeton is a great rival, rivalry, not only in Philly, but like in the Ivy League in general. And Princeton came in on a 10-game winning streak, Penn came in on an 11th grade, or 11th grade, 11-game winning streak. And it was billed as, as like a game to take control of the Ivy League. Princeton got out early, hit a three-pointer. Um, and then basically Penn went and scored 29 straight. So it was 29 to three. And throughout that time, the Penn students started the you've got three-point chance the whole time. Um, it was 33 to nine at halftime. At one point in the second half, Penn was up 40 to 13, and then all of a sudden something clicked for Princeton. They closed the game on a 37 to 9 run and won 50 to 49, stunning the the Penn Quakers. Um, so, and, and that's why I guess they called it Black Tuesday. But Penn would have the last laugh. They ended up beating Princeton later in the season. Um, to win the Ivy League. That was one of Fran Dunphy's team. It was a pretty good Penn team. They knocked off Temple that year early on when they were ranked number seven. Um, they played Kansas tough to open the season. They ended up in the 11th seed, lost in the first round to Florida. But after Black Tuesday, Penn said, you know what? This ain't going to happen again. They went on to go 25 straight games in the Ivy without a loss that it would extend into the 2000-2001 season. So, Princeton got the the win today and, and laugh on Black Tuesday, but Penn said, you know what, we're just going to dominate now for the next season plus. So on this day, back in 1999, Penn lost to Princeton 50 to 49 after blowing a 40 to 13 lead in the second half. It's a tough loss for the Sixers and the Owls. It's almost Super Bowl time. Huge, huge shout out to Octavius Cotto for his contributions, not only for Negro League Baseball, but more importantly, the city in Philadelphia and fighting for civil rights. Thank you. Go have yourselves a Thursday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.